Hello, and welcome to Applying for Grants, Tips and Tricks. There are lots of grant opportunities out there, not only with OSPI. And are you missing out on them because you aren't sure about how to go writing a grant? Maybe you've written some grants and have been unsuccessful in being awarded funding. Today, we hope to equip you with tips, tricks, and other ideas to help you successfully apply for and be awarded grant funding. My name is Samantha Bruski. I am the Training and Communication Specialist at OSPI Child Nutrition Services. Getting a grant can seem like an overwhelming process, but with proper preparation and basic knowledge of grant awards, you can be successful. This session will discuss basic grant writing requirements, provide suggestions to help avoid stress in writing and receiving grant funds, and share ways that you can easily become a strong contender for, grant, for grants. So the first tip is start early. We say this one often, but when reviewing grant proposals, those who have spent more time on them are often better quality. So this is always going to be our first tip. And the first thing to do is read it thoroughly. I'm not a natural reader personally, but I do find that reading the entire request for applications or RFA as I'll refer to it, helps me better understand the objects, objectives of the grant and what the funder might like to see. And after doing that, you will wanna read it again. It may be difficult to do with so much information, but I like to read it once and then read it again. I don't know about you, but I do tend to pick up more details when I give something multiple pass-throughs. The first thing to consider after reading the RFA, our request for application, is can something that you need be helped by this grant? And does your need meet their requirements? You'll want to start developing an idea that fits within the guidelines that they set forth. So when considering how the grant will help, it's a good time to do your homework. What are the funders priorities? Is this a reoccurring grant? What have other successful grant proposals done? This will help you better understand what may be a good idea to propose. We say this one often, but when reviewing grant proposals, those who have more time spent th on them are often better quality. So make sure to follow instructions carefully because when evaluators take a look at your proposal, you want to ensure to include everything that they wanted, even down to whether the paper should be stapled or paper clipped and especially formatting. In general, you want to avoid using any jargon or acronyms in your grant. However, using words and terms that the request for applications has helps you connect what you want to do with the proposed grant, and it helps the, the grant reader see that. The best grants often tell a story. We're not asking for a novel, but make sure that you describe what you need and why you need it, which, which brings us to our next suggestion. It tells your story, but it is brief and concise and it avoids words like might or could and doesn't include any unnecessary attachments or information. Just make sure that your story is strong. The funder knows what you're asking money for um, within a specific grant, but talk about it and what can be done with that funding and make them excited for it and be confident when you do it. Going back to asking yourself, how will this grant help? You will have to assess your needs and describe your goals, as well as how the grant will support them. We'll talk a little bit more about assessing your needs later in the presentation. Grant evaluators love to see that your plans are sustainable and like to see how you plan on keeping the project alive long after their funding may end. This also ties into planning. When you're describing what you need and figuring out how you can do it, plan how you can make this grant sustainable for the future even if it's just describing how a piece of equipment will last for 10 years and how many students that might affect. The next part is evaluate. Talk about how you plan to evaluate the success of your idea. Evaluating your project is an important step of the project management, and we will dive a little bit further into this um, later as well. Planning. These groups support you in knowing what is feasible as well as supporting your documentation and claims when it comes to describing project plans. Even outside partners can help you with writing a stronger proposal and ensuring your information is current. 
So make sure to work with the people who are listed on the screen here. They can help you. Another part of planning is preparing the budget. So if you have staff or, or requesting staff, make sure to do your homework and work with the experts and find out you know, information on wages, salary, benefits, overhead, cost of living adjustments, all of that stuff. For grants that include equipment purchases, you must follow the guidelines in the RFA, but make sure you at least do the following. Obtain quotes. Check and see if your grant requires a certain number of quotes, and then make sure when you obtain the, the quotes that you're asking for the same specifications. Make sure to include shipping, installation, tax, disposal, and of old, of old equipment. Now that you've gathered all the information that you need, in order to meet the RFA criteria and tell the story, and you've written it, it's now time to review your proposal. Check that it meets all criteria. Validate that all attachments are in your packet and ensure that it adheres to application guidelines such as formatting. This may be a good time to review the RFA again. Another tip I have for you is read it out loud. Yes, the grade school trick still works, and it is the best way to hear mistakes that might be hiding in your writing. Along the same lines, it's a good time to look at the review of your proposal, and you've already um, done it yourself, but also include content experts, editing experts, and somebody who's unfamiliar because they'll be able to point out more things. Make sure to submit your application on time. Even if the grant allows for late submissions, they might dock points. So far we've discussed what makes a successful grant proposal. Let's move on to our next topic, identifying criteria for any grant. One of the more challenging aspects of grant writing is identifying the criteria you need to meet. Here are some tips to help you with this. Yes, I'm showing this one again, it is a repeat, but as a reminder, read and reread the RFA thoroughly when applying for a grant. One suggestion might be to highlight RFA, the RFA by topic, some topics might include due dates, things needed from others, things that you need to do, important information, and reporting requirements. Really, you could use any categories that you want, but by dissecting it, um, you can use any method that you'd like to work with that, and you can dissect the RFA to what you need to do. Some grant writers choose to highlight things they need to do, things others need to do and then sharpie out things that they don't have to look at ever again. Again, there's no wrong way to identify criteria, but just make sure that you have a process. If you have any other tips to share with everyone um, for identifying criteria of a grant, please send them into CNS. We'd love to hear them. Next, we're going to talk about planning a successful project. There are a couple different aspects to consider. One thing is the needs assessment, which we're going to get into here, and then the second is evaluation. I mentioned needs assessments earlier, and I wanted to take a moment to give you some pointers on successful ones and elaborate how they help you when writing your grant. When considering applying for a grant, you should think about who will this affect, what matters to them, and what matters to your stakeholders. This helps you elaborate details to the grant reader and show them who it will be ha helping and why it's important. You'll also want to consider why should this priority be a goal, what evidence do you have to support it, and what barriers do you have for implementation. This will help you show the grant reader evidence of your project um, and who and those who need it and why it may not have been done before. Just putting this into an example, this will affect enchanted elementary school students. What matters to them? They want to have food that they like. What matters to your stakeholders? Serving healthy meals that students enjoy. Why is it important? Because we want to increase the number of re reimbursable meals served. You want to cite some evidence. According to a study, this says that. In barriers, lack of funding we need and need a new outlet installed. The important things about need assessments and discussing the evidence and barriers is that you want to do that, but it doesn't place blame for the barrier. 
It provides evidence from reliable sources and explains what eliminating the barrier will do for stakeholders. I have another example for you. Here we have a good one. Enchanted School District has requested funding the last three budget cycles. Due to other education priorities, our request has not been able to be fully funded. A not so great example, Enchanted School District has repeatedly asked for funding the last three budget cycles. Each time we have been denied due to needing a new gym. And here we have another. Some thoughts on the topic. If you, you, if you're, you, if you use your needs assessment to, to help tell your story, you'll automatically be telling the grant reader what you need, why you need it, and how, if it gets funded, it will help those in need. Next, we're going to talk about evaluating your project. Evaluation seems like a daunting task, but something to think and report on, what you're going to do, how it will prove that you're meeting your goals, and how often you'll do it. This can be a large, one large report or many different factors that prove your success. We'll look at examples in just a couple slides, but just make sure that your evaluation always ties back to these main ideas. And thinking about the previous slide, what the task will be and how you'll prove that you're meeting requirements, how often that you'll report. Plan on how you'll evaluate the overall outcomes and validate that it's working. The process that you'll want to use should be SMART. It needs to be specific, measurable, attainable, or achievable, results-oriented, and time-sensitive. So this plan here um, talks a little bit about evaluation. It's a two-year project and they plan on increasing fresh fruits and vegetables by a certain percentage. Um, and it talks about how many students that they'll serve. So it is specific, talks about how many students. It's measurable, um, it gives a certain percentage and how often that they're going to do this to meet that percentage. You've determined that this is attainable and your results will be shown on the menus and it is time sensitive. You plan on implementing it within two years. Again, just make sure that your goals are attainable for your organization. What you might write is, it does depend on the group that you'll serve, but this buffet style outcome list provides multiple ways to determine a successful outcome of the program. Again, this is specific, measurable, you've determined it's attainable, we have results and it is time sensitive. In this section, we discuss project management, including needs assessments, where you need to determine who the project will impact and why it's important, as well as the potential positive impact and the barriers to the project. We also discuss evaluation plans. Remember to describe your evaluation of the project by using SMART, specific, measurable, attainable, results oriented, and time sensitive. So one question that you might be asking yourself is, how do I win my grant? I know I asked when I was researching into this. So the last topic for the training is being awarded your grant. All grants are a little different, but competitive grants will have some sort of scoring configuration to help decide who will receive funding. Some basic things funders or evaluators will look at are, did you meet basic requirements? File format, did you answer all the questions, etc. Is the project in line with the grant objectives? Did you read the RFA and develop a project the funder would want to grant their funds toward? You made a clear connection for what you would like and the objectives for the grant. Don't expect the evaluator to infer what you would like to do. Try to be as clear and concise as possible. And the expected outcomes. Show the evaluator what your project will do. Draw clear, smart conclusions. I think we've said this a few times now, but the best thing about things being electronic is searching. It tells you exactly how you can be scored if they've included it in the RFA, RFA, and they often do. Here are some things to look for. So you want to hold the control and F um, buttons on your keyboard. 
And you'll want to search for things like points, checklist, pages, conference call, indirect cost, and construction. This isn't a comprehensive list, but it will get you a good start and it will help you guide, um, it'll help guide you to what the evaluators are looking for, as well as any additional requirements that you might have. Next, here are some resources for you. This is the CNS Grants webpage and there's a link on the screen. Uh, this is where we post all the grants that we administer. Um, there's, and we also link to uh, OSPI grants on this page and other external grants at the bottom of this web page. We've also updated our grants tip sheet to include information from this training. You can find this on our grants web page as well. Another website that um, is beneficial is grants.gov. Um, it's a web page for searching federal grants. And this is beta.sam.gov. Um, it helps you find CFDA numbers and it can help you uh, better search for grants on grants.gov. So today we discussed ideas to help you be awarded grant funding. By reviewing the RFA and understanding what evaluators look at and other tips in this presentation, you are on your way to be awarded the grants you apply for. Thank you for joining us today and I hope that this helps you not only have higher success in your child nutrition grant applications, but any grants that you apply for.